Hello and welcome back to my channel and more importantly part three of my project living with a Tao Tao. If you haven't already done so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way you can stay up to date with me and all of my projects. If you've missed the first couple episodes of this project let me get you caught up. I purchased the most hated scooter on the internet to see if it really is as bad as everyone says that it is. And in order to give it a fair shake, I'm going to be the best scooter owner I can possibly be and record all the data. And part of being the best scooter owner I can be means performing all my recommended services on time. Well, my little Tau Tau here just hit 300 kilometers, and that means it's time for the 300 kilometer service. So let's get started. Well, let's uh, crack open the old owner's manual and see exactly what the 300 kilometer service entails. Now, the 300 kilometer service, it looks like it includes inspecting the engine oil, inspecting my cooling system, I'm assuming that means the fan shroud, I don't know and replacing the transmission oil. Now, I'm gonna go one step further. I'm not just going to inspect my engine oil. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. And let me explain to you why. This engine is just getting broken in right now. And that means all those mating surfaces of all those mechanical components are wearing themselves together. They're kind of making their own grooves. And that means there's a lot of excess metal suspended in the oil. Now on most motorcycles you're going to have a really early service like 500 miles or 300k and part of that is replacing the engine oil to make sure that all of those metal bits that are floating around in there don't become abrasive and prematurely wear out components. So I feel like it's cheap insurance to make sure I have a reliable way to work. Now you'll notice I'm not due to adjust my valve clearance until 4,000 kilometers and I don't think I'm going to be following that. You see, once again, referring back to other manufacturers like Honda and Yamaha, usually the first service, the 500 mile or 300K service, includes a valve adjustment. And that's because the valves are also going through a break-in. You know, they're pounding themselves into the seat and getting all nice and worked into the head. So I am going to do the cheap insurance because valve adjustments are free. Oil costs money, but valve adjustments are free. Now, in addition to changing my final drive oil, my engine oil, and adjusting my valves, I want to take this time to do a nut and bolt check. I want to check the torque on all the fasteners holding my exhaust system together and holding the wheels on and the levers and all that. And while I'm in here, I do have a few issues that have arisen that I'd like to address. So I'm going to start a checklist here so I can keep track of it all. So I've got uh, engine oil, I have final drive, I have the valve adjustment. I want to check the exhaust fasteners. I want to check the axle nuts. And I want to address some issues. Now, here are the issues that have arisen in the first 300 kilometers. One, the front brake. The front brake on my scooter is not very effective. Now, when I installed the front wheel on my scooter, I did notice a little bit of oil on the caliper and I figured it might just be brake fluid from when they installed the brake lines but now I'm starting to think it was some sort of corrosion resistant oil uh, you know that they put on brake rotors so they don't rust in the box and um, I think that I probably should have cleaned it down with some brake clean uh, before I rode it around and possibly now that oil is embedded in the pads now the brake lever feels fine it has plenty of pressure it doesn't feel like there's air in the line but it is very underwhelming. As Jay Leno likes to put it, it doesn't really slow you down as much as it retards progress. Now the next issue I want to address is the steering head bearings. Now the steering bearings felt really good out of the box. They didn't have any extra slop or play, um, but I've started to notice that 
um, when I go over a, a divot, you know, I get a little bit of a pop in the bars and that to me tells me I have a little bit of backlash inside the steering head bearings. So I want to do the steering bearings. And that about does it for the issues so far, <laughs> knock on wood. But I've been thinking, I want to take some really detailed measurements of this scooter so I can track the health of the scooter as time goes on. Now, what kind of measurements you might ask? Well, I want to measure the charging system. Not just at the output at the battery, but also the output of the stator. I want to check the output of the pickup coil and the resistance from the pickup coil to ground. I want to check the charge coil output because I want to know if that gets weaker over time or if that fails in an instant. I want to read the spark plug. Now let me tell you a little bit about that. Now you can tell a lot about how an engine is running by the color and the condition of the spark plug. Last but not least, I want to measure the tread depth of both front and rear tires. Now, I stirred up a hornet's nest in the comment section when I said I had never seen an engine last longer than a tire. I want to put my money where my mouth is. I really don't think I'm going to wear out a tire before that engine gives up the ghost. But it's good to keep track of that data because if I can extrapolate how much longer the tire is going to last, I can extrapolate how much longer I think the engine is going to last. It'd be fun to keep track of. And once again, if you think of something you think I should be keeping track of, leave me a comment below. All right, so I got the engine oil out. I kind of want to show you guys what it looks like. You know, it looks pretty good. There's no big pieces of glitter in there. You know, it doesn't look like a Disney princess exploded or anything but you can kind of see a bit of a sheen on it. You can kind of see these like lines form, kind of like a, it looks kind of like a sandstorm or something. And what's forming those lines are the little tiny particles of metal that are floating in there. Now that's from the piston rings wearing against the cylinder and it's from the cams breaking in. And uh, I'm just glad that it's out in this pan and not inside the engine. All right, so I've got my final drive draining here. And while I wait for this to drain, I kind of want to show you the result here. You can really see some, some shimmering going on in the uh, final drive gear oil. And uh, that's just the bearings wearing in and the teeth wearing into each other. You know, there's several cogs in there that all mesh together and they have to be broken in properly. That's one reason you need hypoid gear oil. All right, so I've got clean engine oil. I've got clean final drive oil. Uh, my next thing I need to address is my valve adjustment. Let's hit it. So, I am finishing up my valve adjustment here and I just wanted to share with you what I found. Now in the initial setup, I set my valve last to three thousandths on the intake and four thousandths on the exhaust. Um, I did notice after about 200 kilometers, they started making a little bit more noise. Um, but I knew I was going to be in here at 300 kilometers, so I left it alone. Uh, as I measured them this evening, uh, and this is a cold motor, of course. You should always do your valve adjustments cold. Um, I measured them at 5 thousandths on the intake and 5 thousandths on the exhaust. How that can happen in 300 miles, I'm not quite sure. It could have mushroomed the head of the valve out a little bit. Could be a lot of things. Uh, or it just could be due to the fact that, you know, metal is going to stretch and things are going to change. So, that's the first thing I wanted to note. Uh, valves were loose, uh, adjusted those back to 3 thousandths on the intake, 4 thousandths on the exhaust. And the last thing I want to show you is this spark plug. Now this is the NGK CR7 HSA I installed in the initial setup. Now the coloration of the grounding strap and the coloration of the porcelain insulator on the electrode can tell you a lot about how the engine is running. And because this one has like a white powdery color, 
I'm gonna say it's running a little bit lean. Now, there is a little bit of a rosy red brown color on the grounding strap, and that's really the color you're looking for. You want that uniformly all around the scooter. Um, it doesn't look too carboned up. Usually when you get your choke ring, it's gonna be right around the edge of here on the threads. Um, that shows you how rich the scooter is running when it's on the choke circuit. Mine looks pretty good. And I don't see any blow by or any oil deposits or oil residue. So uh, I would say the scooter is in good health, although the carburetor might be a little bit lean. I am going to put the engine back together and uh, carry on with my list. All right, so let's uh, check in where we are on the board here. Uh, we got the valve adjustment done, uh, happy for that. Uh, while I was under the scooter, I checked all my exhaust fasteners. Um, pretty important because the exhausts are known to fall off of these scooters. And to my surprise, a lot of them were loose. Uh, I am really, really running out of steam here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this whole board tonight. So uh, I did get the main parts of the 300K service done. Um, I just wanna take a look at my brake um, because that is a big, big issue on my way to work. And then uh, the rest of this stuff, I'm just gonna take care of when I get home from work tomorrow. But like I said, I'm not disobeying the service. 300K, I did all these things. And uh, actually the only one that I needed to do was here. Uh, because these weren't even required by the 300k service. So I still feel like I'm ahead of schedules. Um, let, me, uh, let me talk to you a little bit about this brake too. So if your brake pad um, does have oils embedded into it, um, one old racetrack remedy is you take the brake pads off, um, you hose them down with brake clean, and then you light them on fire with a blowtorch. I guess it's supposed to burn off any excess oils, so I mean it's worth a shot. Brake pads are pretty cheap for this and so are rotors, but I'm gonna see if I can do this the real way, the way that someone who buys a $750 scooter would do it and uh, try and salvage these brake pads. So, uh, here goes that. And with that, I'm gonna call it a night. Uh, I just have a few more hours that I can get some sleep. And uh, just a little bit of sleep beats no sleep for me. So, uh, I hope that makes a difference on my commute to work tomorrow. You know, here we go. And we're back. Uh, I know when I last left you, I said I was gonna hit it again the next day. And uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's, uh, it's not the next day, it's a few days later. Uh, you know, I got a haircut and everything. I, uh, I just got a case of the cobbler's son, you know. Uh, once you wrench all day, the last thing you want to do is come home and wrench some more. Uh, but, you know, I got a little bit more wrenching left in me today, so I uh, figured we'd finish off the old 300K service. All right, so let's see where we left off on the whiteboard here. Uh, we got the 300K service done, you know. That was the engine oil, the final drive, the valve adjustment, check the exhaust fasteners. Uh, glad I did all that. That was what was required of me. Um, I do still want to check the axle nuts, make sure that they're correctly torqued and everything is good. And uh, the front brake, I will say, uh, after cleaning them and burning them, man, they feel a lot better. I mean, they didn't become Brembo's overnight, uh, but they definitely uh, slow the scooter down a lot quicker now. Uh, I still have my steering bearing play, um, and I want to do all these checks. Oh yeah, I did. Uh, check the spark plug when I was doing my valve adjustment and it is lean. 
Uh, so we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do about that, whether we're going to reject the carb or uh, try some other stuff. But uh, these are all items that I just wanted to make record of as sort of like a health check. Okay, so this is going to kind of help me monitor the health of the scooter as we go. And uh, I was thinking about this a lot. You know, I've got, <laughs> I've got a lot of time to think now uh, because my commute to work uh, takes so long. <laughs> um, but I want to take all these items and to keep really nice track of them, I want to make a uh, Google Doc spreadsheet and uh, just keep track of everything. So that's exactly what I did. I created a spreadsheet in this Google Doc and I want to keep track of this scooter's health report as I perform each service every 1,000 kilometers. So I got a place for date, kilometers in. I want to do a compression check every service. Um, I want to do stator winding outputs on all the different legs, charge coil output. Uh, I want to keep track of the total charging system, both at idle and at 5,000 RPM. Um, I also want to check the pickup coil and the resistance and the output and the CDI output and the tire tread depth. Now, not only will this help me keep track of like if the scooter is going downhill and keeping track of data, but this is also like a really cool uh, incremental test. Like, you know, you wonder what is the minimum pickup coil output um, that will still allow the scooter to run. Well, we're going to know this. If it drops down and down and down, hey man, it's only putting out 0.8 volts AC, but it's still running. We'll know, hey, if your pickup coil puts that out at cranking, it'll still run. I don't know. I think it's pretty fun. So, uh, this is what we're going to tackle today. Um, I'm going to tear the scooter into the service position and we're going to get into testing the compression and the electrical system. All right, so I've got my scooter in the service position here. I've got my compression tester hooked up um, and uh, we're going to hold her wide open throttle and see what she makes. All right, looks like she made about 120 pounds. Um, that's actually a little anemic. Usually these things run right around 160, 170. Um, I don't know if maybe that's because I'm only 300 kilometers and we're not all the way broke in yet or what, but that is kind of low. Let me clear that out. And let's do one more. Yeah, right around 120, 122. And you see when it gets up there, man, it really slows down too. It really is, uh, it's having a hard time getting there. So, uh, like I said, maybe we'll chalk that up to not being fully broken yet, or uh, maybe we don't have a, uh, Fantastic motor here. All right, so let's check out the charging system. Uh, let me run you through the setup a little bit. I've got my multimeter hooked up to the battery, um, and then I have my DigiSync here to monitor RPM. Now, as I said in my document, I wanna measure the charging system both at 1750 RPM, which is idle by the book's specification, and I wanna measure it again at 5000 RPM. And that way, as I own the scooter, I can see if the charging system is getting weaker because I'm always testing it at the same points. I also noticed that in the last video, you couldn't really read the RPM readout on the DigiSync. So I spent a little more time trying to get everything in focus this time. So hopefully that works for y'all. So uh, first thing is the charging system test at idle. Let's see what she does. So let's, uh, let's talk about that result a little bit. Um, as you saw, the voltage of the battery actually went down once I started the engine, and that is because the charging system is not generating enough current uh, to compensate for the draw that it requires to run this scooter. But now for the real test, um, we're going to start it again, rev it up to 5,000 RPMs, and see what our charging output is. Oh, my God. 
Alright, so that was right about where it was uh, when I first assembled the scooter, about 13.8. So I guess no charging system loss in 300 kilometers? Alright, so let me walk you through what's going on here. These are your stator output wires. I, uh, I dug them out from where they were so nicely tucked in behind this body panel. Uh, you can always find your stator output wires because this, they always exit the fan shroud. So you find the wire loom that comes out of your fan shroud, trace it where it goes in the harness, and you're going to find a three-pin connector like this. Now, the wires are decoded as such. There are two stator output wires that output AC voltage and one ground wire. So green is always ground on these Chinese scooters because they copy the Honda wire harness color patterns. So that means that the yellow and the white wires are our lighting coil outputs. So the bike will run just fine if you dis disconnect these, okay? So now I'm gonna probe my multimeter in through both of these pins and I'm gonna measure the stator output AC voltage both at idle and at 5,000 RPMs. And to do that, I'll be using my trusty multimeter and my trusty DigiSync. About 13 volts AC. about 15 volts AC. So now we're going to increase the RPMs to 5,000. We got about 42 volts on the white. And about 34 volts on the yellow. All right, so now that we have that logged in our little spreadsheet, we're gonna move on. So outside of the stator connector, we have these two bullet connectors. Now these are gonna be for your pickup coil and the charge coil. The charge coil is usually this black wire with red tracer, and the pickup coil is usually a blue wire with white tracer, and then sometimes they change colors. This one changed into the blue wire with yellow tracer. So we're gonna start with the charge coil. Now, with the charge coil disconnected like this, the CDI is not receiving any AC voltage, therefore it can't pass any current to the ignition coil. So in this test, we're only gonna be able to check the charge coil output under cranking because the engine's not gonna start. So I've got my uh, multimeter set to AC voltage and I've got the negative lead of my multimeter hooked to ground. It's been hooked to ground this whole time, I just forgot to mention that. So I'm gonna plug this in here. We'll crank the motor over and see what she does. So that's a pretty strong charge coil. She was putting about 72 volts AC out peak. So that really was pretty nice for, you know, how few RPMs that was. Oh, let me, uh, let me see how many RPMs this thing does under cranking. That's kind of an interesting test I've never done. Yeah, cranks about 558 RPM. That's uh, pretty interesting. I, never, I have never measured that on a scooter before. So we're gonna move on and disconnect this blue wire with white tracer. This is the pickup coil. And we're gonna do the same test. Once again, with the pickup coil disconnected, this scooter is not going to start. So we're only gonna be able to measure this voltage under cranking conditions. The pickup coil actually is the trigger for the CDI, okay? So the CDI is getting all this voltage from the charge coil, it's passing the ignition coil, and when it gets a signal from the pickup coil, it knows, hey, fire that ignition coil because everything is ready to bang. So I'm gonna put my positive lead here, and we're gonna
we're gonna crank her over. So I'm getting about 0.11 volts AC on that. Um, that number is only sort of important. Really what's important is that it's getting a signal at all. But you will notice that if your air gap is too great on your pickup coil, that voltage is gonna be pretty sporadic and it'll be a lot lower than 0.11. So the last test I'm gonna do is the resistance to ground on this pickup coil. So I'm gonna keep my multimeter in the same position. I'm gonna shift it over to the ground. We'll let her kind of zero out a little bit. Touch the leads so we know that zero is actually zero. Okay, so what do we have? Looks like we have about 157 ohms, which uh, sounds pretty good. That's right on the money for what I'd expect out of a pickup coil. Okay, so we're on the last leg of it now. The final measurement I wanna make is the CDI output to the ignition coil. So the ignition coil is mounted here to the frame and you have two wires. You have a black wire with yellow tracer and that is the voltage to the ignition coil. And then you have a green wire, which is the ground trigger for the coil. And that's what switches from the primary to the secondary circuit on the ignition coil, causing all the voltage to jump across the spark plug. I won't get into that, but we're gonna pull this wire off the ignition coil here. This is the black wire with yellow tracer. And we're gonna put our handy dandy multimeter on it. And we're gonna see what kind of output she makes in AC voltage under cranking. Kind of jumped around a lot there. Uh, I was looking to be about 30 volts AC. Now as the charge coil gets weak and worn out and gets heated and shorted, um, that number is gonna change. And also, you know, if we have a bad pickup coil, if the pickup coil is cutting in and out, you know, that voltage will go from 30 volts AC to zero and then come back. So I uh, just wanted to make a quick measurement of that. Well, I can tell I touched a little bit of a soft spot there in the first video. I got a lot of comments about the shade I threw uh, comparing the uh, wearing tires out to wearing engines out. But I wanna keep track of you know my tire wear so I can see and project whether or not I think this engine is gonna last longer than the tires. So I'm gonna make my measurement here in the center of the tire. And looks like I'm right at 5.30 seconds. I guess this tire ships with 5.30 seconds because there is, you know, still the little nubs there, the little mold nubs on the tire. I've barely been riding this thing 300 kilometers. But we'll check the front tire too and uh, enter it all into the database. Okay, well, I've got all my data punched into the spreadsheet here. And uh, while I was punching in these numbers, a thought occurred to me. You know, because this health report is in a Google Doc, I can probably share a link to it in the description, and then you guys can use this as reference for diagnosis of your own scooter. Like, let's say you don't know if your uh, charge coil output is, is good or bad. Well, you can compare it to mine. We know this is a known good running scooter, and it puts out uh, uh, 70 volts AC. Um, or, you know, for fun, if you guys wanna just follow along for whatever reason. Yeah, so I guess uh, let me know in the comments if this would be valuable to you, uh, maybe be entertaining, uh, or if you want me to keep it less technical in this video series. Uh, let's recap where we're at here. Um, we took care of the front brake. Um, we took care of the charging system and recorded all this data. So the only thing left to do now is check our axle nuts and tighten up the steering bearings. And then uh, we're gonna hit the road for another 600 kilometers until the 1,000 kilometer service. So let's get cranking on that. All right, so let me walk you through how to adjust these steering head bearings. Okay, so you can see in there, you have two nuts. You have an upper nut and you have a lower nut. So this upper nut is the jam nut and that holds the lower nut at a certain position. And the lower nut is responsible for 
applying what's called a preload on the bearing. If you don't have enough preload, you actually have quite a bit of slop in the steering, which means that this moves back and forth easily, yes, but it actually moves this way as well. So as you apply the front brake, you might hear a click, which is what I was kind of getting. And uh, there's no real spec on this for what the preload is supposed to be on this bearing. You know, a normal manufacturer like Honda or Yamaha will have a torque spec, lower nut to, you know, say 15 foot pounds or 20 newton meters or what have you. Um, I'm going to do this the Harley Davidson way. In the Harley Davidson service manuals, they have you elevate the motorcycle so the front tire is off the ground and you adjust the tension on the nut so that the front wheel just barely falls over by itself. Just like that. If it's too loose, here let me loosen this up a little bit. It's also kind of difficult to get your big wrenches in there because they're such big sizes. Okay, so I've got it loosened up here. And you'll see now this thing falls over all by itself way easy, right? It falls over quick. And I have this, tent, this slack. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but you can sure feel it. So what I'm going to do is tighten this bottom nut until the tension is just right. And she just barely falls over by herself, maybe just a little more. See where that's at. Oh yeah, just barely on that. And now I don't have any slack in the front wheel. I don't know if you can hear that the clunking noise disappeared. So now what I'm going to do is hold this bottom nut in its position and tighten the top jam nut against the bottom nut. So that is my 300 kilometer service, quite literally in the books. Uh, I was able to address some issues like my loose steering head bearings and make sure that nothing was going to fall off my scooter on the way to work. Um, I am a little concerned with how lean this engine is running. If you remember when I pulled the spark plug for my valve adjustment, I found that it's pretty white and cloudy. And I guess I need your guys' help for this. Um, I'm kind of stumped whether I should continue this experiment with just testing the scooter as it is delivered with all its original equipment or should I go the extra mile and you know adjust the carburetor possibly rejet it or should I go even further than that I know a lot of you have been talking in the comment section about mods you know maybe I should try a different carburetor a larger carburetor or purchase different jetting so uh, let me know in the comments how you think I should proceed. If we're going to do modifications, what kind of budget would be reasonable for a scooter this way. You know, I'm not going to kit this whole thing up with NCY exhaust and an NCY big bore and, you know, all these great things. Because at the end of the day, if you bought this scooter, you're buying it because it is cheap transportation and I'd like to test it that way. But if you don't want to wait for the next video, you can always follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll be providing updates frequently on those social media channels just so you can check in and know what's going to happen in the next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you ring that notification bell because you're not going to want to miss my 1000 kilometer review of this scooter. But until then, I'll be living with a Tau Tau. Living with a Tau Tau.